Hi students and welcome back to Heartbeat Christian Academy. It's awesome to spend time with you today and today we are going to really get into it. So you must prepare yourself before we get into the lecture. The contact details, if you need to get hold of us, there's the contact number and the email address. And also there is the banking details if you want to support us. So yes, we are really getting into it today and uh, I'm sure we, some feathers are going to be ruffled, but I'm going to try and do this in a very positive way way we are talking about uh, the financial household and if you can recall we are busy with financial wisdom in christian basics 2 and we've done lecture one our financial problems we've spoken about our financial foundation or we've spoken about our financial management in lecture three and now we are getting to our financial household now the reason i'm laughing <laughs> is because this course was was written obviously years ago and uh, it, since then, uh, there's been a lot of uh, movements in the women's liberation movement. And there's a lot of sensitivity uh, around uh, the man-female uh, um, roles in, in the household and in marriage. So we're going to talk about it from a biblical perspective. And uh, I want you to keep an open heart and an open mind as we discuss this. Uh, there are certain things in the lecture that I would say, mm, maybe, you know, we need to just look at that. But I do think that there's a lot of fruitful thought in what we are going to be discussing today. So I'm excited to do this lectures with you, uh, especially these financial ones. They really, I feel they really are powerful and they have a difference. They can make a difference. They can be a difference maker in your life. Okay, so topic one will be the father of the household. Topic two, the mother of the household. Topic three, the children of the household. And then uh, topic for the future of the household and we're going to go to the manual before we go there i want to share one scripture with you that i just felt in my heart i should share as an overarching scripture and that is um let's just uh, go there that is ephesians 5 verse 28 in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his his wife loves himself uh, it's a powerful scripture because it talks about loving your own body and uh, the way you love your body, the way you look after yourself, you need to look after your wife in that way. So keep that thought as an, as an overarching thought in terms of even when we're talking about uh, men being the priest of the house and, and men having certain responsibilities, still keep that in mind that you are to love your wife as your own body. So that doesn't mean it's not referring to, to uh, gender-based violence. It's not referring to when we talk about uh, the, the man's role. It's a complementary role. It's a partnership. We're not talking about a dominance. Uh, this isn't, I mean, if you read Ephesians 5.28, that throw, throws dominance right out of uh, the, the ballpark. Because if you look at that, you'll say, I have to treat my wife as I'm treating myself, which means that um, you're obviously not going to abuse your own body uh, in a natural sense. So let's go to the lecture. Let's get into it. It says here, God gave man the responsibility of providing for the household. Financial wisdom involves the man, the woman, the children, all functioning within their God-given roles. So there's a there's a specific God-given role, and we have to function in that role. Well, we don't we mustn't function in each other's role, we must function in our role. And yet just says if anyone does not provide for his own house or for especially for for those of the household of god he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever I, i've thought of that scripture many times because we have to provide we have to be providers we have to look after our uh, people in our households we have to look after our family and uh, you know uh, this scripture here which is just a bit down says that um the righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So it says there's a there's definitely a benefit of being a righteous man because your financial wisdom really, um, you, you know, really blesses people and, and people can see this blessing. Then uh, I just want to say that there's a lot of fights and quarrels about money. So that is why it's important that I think both parties just listen to this lecture together and that we agree to uh, to really get the best out of life by working together as a team uh, and uh, not allowing the devil to bring separation. One of the biggest tricks that the enemy uses 
is he actually separates us. He, he brings the vision. And when you can divide, you can rule. Uh, when you can divide, you can conquer. And that is what the devil does in our household. So we mustn't allow the enemy to come in with uh, something as trivial as money. I mean, we're talking about mammon. We're talking about the system of this world. We are stewards of God's possessions as, we, as we've learned through the lecture. And we are looking after God's things. We want to do it in a God-honoring way. And we also want to do it uh, using the best of our capacity by uh, training our children by working with our spouse, man and woman together as a team. Because what you will uh, notice, if you really go do a study, even a scientific study, you will notice that the way man and woman are created, and I'm, and I'm generalizing here because there are some psychological issues and some uh, life stages and, and some uh, uh, nurturing uh, that causes people to grow up differently. But in general terms, when you put a man and a woman together and they come in full unity, they come in full support of each other, they work together, you have got the most powerful being on the planet as, as they function as one because they bring the the best of both worlds it's like that bread you can eat they say it's the best of both worlds it's a white bread but it's supposed to have the roughage of a brown bread now it's the best of both worlds when you bring the man and the woman together and they work together as a family and then when you've got the children looking at this example of of mother and father and and looking up to their parents and then the children being uh, intentionally i want to use the in the word intentionally and, and this is something I must be honest we didn't always do this so I'm not going to preach as if uh, you know I I've always done this but you must intentionally train your children so that they will have that financial wisdom so this is great then the, uh, we also say that uh, the workplace uh, is not the priority so the, the home comes before the workplace and I mean that does sound like a uh, uh, maybe something that we can't do these days. Maybe we feel that the workplace is, is more uh, important and has a greater priority. But what you will understand and what I've seen physically is that people, when their home falls apart, their workplace falls apart. If there's a problem at house, it, that problem transpires to church. And through the years that we've counseled people and that we've been involved in ministry, we've seen this happen frequently where things come over from the workplace where people have, have got their priorities mixed up. So yes, we need to be diligent in our work. Yes, we need to be committed in our work. Yes, we, we need to be successful and, and set an example in our workplace, but we cannot prioritize our work and our careers before our families because once the family falls apart, uh, everything falls apart. The, the family is the bedrock of society. Even in the physical world, uh, the governments of the world, they know this. The statistics support it. They can see that when the family falls apart, it has a lot of socio-economic problems in our communities. And we can see it in our country in South Africa, which is a third world country. We can see that many men are, are absent from the home. And, and leaving the wives to carry on with the, with the work. And it's causing a lot of issues, a lot of issues. And yet we've got the answer. Like I always say, the answer is to make the tree good. Not the fruit, but the tree good. So if we change from the inside out, and maybe as we go through this lecture, we will be prompted to change in certain areas. But yeah, we must look at our priorities as far as the workplace is concerned. And then... I want to start off with the father and it says here that the father is responsible. This is the order in the kingdom of God. Okay, um, so men have been designed to handle financial pressure and again we are generalizing. But in general terms, the way the man has been designed, the, the way the man uh, has been created and the attributes of the man makes him sometimes more prone to be able to handle that kind of pressure. So it's not fair if the man then throws that over to his wife. Uh, <clears throat> the woman thinks more emotionally. And I would also add to that more creatively. So the woman can actually come up with great ideas and creativity, don't. 
disregard the value of, of a woman. Even in business, I've seen women excel. In our business, uh, my partner is a woman and, and I go to her for certain things. I, I'm not a chauvinist or, or a sexist. I believe in, in equal rights, that women have the same rights as men. There's no slave, there's no freeman, um, there's, no, there's no male, there's no female. We are all in Christ. We are spirit beings. As we don't have any color prejudices, we don't have any sexual pre prejudices in that sense. But there is an order in general terms. Again, I've seen the exceptions of this in ministry. I've seen where women were much better with finances than, than men, and we will talk about that now. So, um, but God keeps the man responsibility. So if he, if he delegates and he, he asks his wife to help him, he can do that. But he is still ultimately responsibility. So... The husband has the privilege of handling the finances of the family, again, in general terms. And, and it says, you don't run away from this. It talks about man's dominion in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And it just says that, that he, uh, he was already exercising authority over creation when the woman was created. So the man was first and he was the, the, the leader. Even in Genesis, we read that, that, it, that it says that the woman's desire will be after a man. So the woman has this natural desire to actually please the man and serve the man. Um, not in a bad sense, but uh, it's a natural desire for her to, to be the homemaker, to be the contributor, where the man uh, obviously has other uh, values and other desires. Uh, and yet it says that in, in, uh, in this verse here in Genesis 2.20, it says for... Uh, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. So the Lord had to create somebody to help Adam. So Adam needed help. And a lot of times men need help. We are uh, responsible. We were created first. Um, we were given authority over the earth. And, uh, and then the woman was created as a helper. So the woman and the man, are they are partners. And if we could see each other as partners and we could decide to see each other as partners and and then have that mutual respect for each other and love and like i read that scripture in ephesians and that's why i read it uh, where we actually end up really respecting each other and loving each other and and then also the men loving the wives as their own bodies so they're not going to damage their bodies they're not going to hurt their bodies they're not going to make decisions that are negative to their bodies so and then there's an example in the text of the two extremes uh, that just says the one where the wife handles all the finances and the man does nothing there are men like that um, I knew a man who, who earned his salary and he would just dump it on his wife and his wife had to make deal and sometimes uh, if the wife is gifted financially and she has a good financial what we call financial intelligence uh, which which is just a, a maturity in terms of finances then uh, she manages it but then also you get the wives who can't handle that and, and it's unfair pressure and then the two where the husband handles all uh, the finances and excludes the wives and I would actually add a third one that I've seen physically where they both work out of different bank accounts and they actually uh, they uh, they they actually uh, tell each other like you know you have to pay 50% of the rent you have to pay 50% of this for me um, you know uh, that really uh, is not an indication of a, of a good partnership. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it's just my opinion. I'm not saying uh, this to make a, a law or a rule, but I'm just saying that for me is, is just a bit off. I, I would say that if you marry somebody and you are involved with that person, you need to work through the problems. You need to work through the issues. I mean, the first few years of your marriage, and this isn't marriage 101, but the first few years of your marriage, it's going to be iron... Uh, um, you know, uh, sleeping iron, uh, and 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 you're going to be uh, working on each other. So that's going to happen the first few years of your marriage. So don't uh, think that it's going to be easy. And sometimes the easy way out is to split the bank accounts and to say, well, you know, you work with yours, I work with mine, and everybody pays. And especially if there's disputes and there's 
there's a lack of agreement as far as expenses are concerned and purchases are concerned it's all an indication of an underlying problem which is there's a problem in the marriage there's definitely a problem in the marriage there's something that you need to ask god to work in your hearts you need to ask the holy spirit to work in your heart what we don't understand sometimes as christians is that there's a lot of practical things we have to implement in bible school is supposed to teach us that a lot of practical things that we have to implement and we have to identify problems and then rectify those problems as we see them so don't be this deceived the enemy will come in into your marriage into your household into your family you've seen this before you've seen it in other people's lives you might have seen it in your own life and he will come and, and cause havoc by creating the vision and you know what when we are uh, sticking to the scripture and we are obedient uh, to god's word we will not fall into those traps uh, that's that's true but when we when we don't turn the other cheek when we don't walk the extra mile when we don't love our enemies when we don't apply what the lord said when we don't live out corinthians 13 and the love uh, that we see in corinthians 13 we will have strife and there will constantly be problems that come up and those problems are supposed to be solved by the indwelling spirit because we are spirit beings we are supposed to grow and the tree is supposed to change. I mean, I've changed a lot through the years. I'm not a perfect man yet. Uh, and I don't think as long as we're on earth, we will be. But I've changed a lot. There's been things in, in my life that the Lord spoke to me about. I've had to go and repent of things that I've done in my marriage, in my finances. I've had to go and repent. And, and, I've, and I've learned how to humble myself and, and not see my wife as under me, but see my wife as on the side of me as a partner in what we're doing and yet she respects the spiritual authority of the priestly that the Lord's put on me because I was first so there's this beautiful relationship that can happen in marriage and in finances if we just act and implement God's word it talks about delegating responsibility and the, the main thing is it, it it's about the gifting so if for instance the woman has certain things and the man acknowledges that i mean don't be prideful uh, don't be full of pride and and uh, and not want to do this your your wife might be an accountant or a ca or she, you know she might just have a natural neck for figures and you have no neck for it then uh, you know let her fulfill certain functions but remember uh, as far as god is concerned you're not delegating your responsibility you're still responsible and you know like i say the danger is the burden you don't want that burden to be on your wife husbands you don't want her to carry that burden because you were made to carry that burden it's just understanding and then the neglect of responsibility uh it, it's a little section in you <laughs> that says you know uh you wives don't carry the weight and if you feel that that uh the husband is just abdicating handed back to him uh, i would say yes but i would say be cautious ask the holy spirit how you must handle it don't just handle it in a in a standoff manner where you're saying look i'm gonna just um, you know uh, uh, hand it back to you and that no uh, I, I think be sensitive so that you uh, don't fall into unnecessary arguments and unnecessary conflict and unnecessary strife i've seen how marriages fall apart because of going into what i call the mexican standoff you might have seen these movies with the guys standing with their guns it's a standoff and nobody wants to give in and uh, it's it's not biblical it's definitely not biblical and if we have a relationship with the lord if we spend time in the word if we spend time in worship if we spend time in prayer then we will not go into those Mexican stand-ups because the Holy Spirit will soften our hearts and speak to our hearts and tell us what to do and how we should do it. So read through these scriptures. Uh, it talks about Sarah obeying uh, um, Abram. Uh, and it also talks when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Uh, when, when, when men neglect their, uh, and abuse their responsibility, uh, it makes the family groan. It's true. Uh, it says here, and I highlighted that for you, do not fight about it. 
and uh, it gives a little strategy here of of how you can uh, hand the finances back and, and and this little sentence here getting worse before it gets better uh, it, it just means as the the woman is in a bad situation where the man is mismanaging the finances she just leaves it to a point where it's getting worse and it, it, it's supposed then to prompt the man and to say okay let uh, let me accept the responsibility and let me handle this and fix this okay now here's an interesting section as we go into section two or the second topic the mother of the household uh, it talks about two different couples here and you can read through that uh, the one is a couple that really makes debt and uh, puts themselves in a difficult situation so, so i mean you can read that and you can read the scriptures there but i want to get into the second topic there uh, 2.1 which talks about mothers who are working and it does seem that the material that we're using um, you know, it, it does come from an era where women uh, had the liberty of not working. So, yes, um, it, it was possible, but it does look in society that sometimes it's not totally possible. And sometimes even uh, the woman is, uh, is, is highly qualified. There's, there's, a, there's a debate here and I wanted to open it up so that as a student, uh, you need to hear what the Lord says in your family. And uh, when you're counseling people in later years or maybe uh, uh, quite soon, who knows, you need to make decisions here of how you're going to manage this. Uh, what we found in counseling and, and, and the rules in counseling, one of the rules is you don't give people direct advice. So you don't tell them what to do. You let them find their own path and then they will find their path as you give them scripture and you give them support and you listen to them but you don't go and tell them what to do exactly it's very dangerous and that's why i also as i'm doing this course i'm not going to tell you what to do i'm just going to tell you what to consider and there is a case that a lot of times and there's a lot of things here uh, uh, a lot of points that's that's listed in the manual let me take you there uh, about the negative aspects of of a woman working uh, and then you know like income tax and the additional tithe uh, transportation uh, other expenses lunches because she can't make the food restaurant takeaways she has to have additional clothing uh, lost of saving because she can't shop around she can't hunt for prices the hairdresser because her hair needs to look well for or good for her <laughs> employer but she needs to do it in any case um, employment expenses and, and child care cost if you if you put in uh, that so there's a lot of negatives listed here uh, that you need to consider uh, when when uh, we were young uh, i said to Ingela, you know what i prefer you to actually uh, be diligent in the house because you do a great job everything is always right i'm saving a lot of money plus uh, our child is getting uh, the best possible care. Now, it's not always possible for everybody to do that, but uh, what the manual here talks about is really consider the expenses and add it up because you might be paying for, for, for a child care. You might be paying for fuel costs because you're driving and you might be paying for certain things and uh, and it might add up to, a, to where you're seeing that actually if you're earning your salary, you... Um, you're not even breaking even you're losing money and then you might say to yourself well it might be better for me to to uh, really focus on my house and let my husband focus on on that the problem sometimes with that is that uh, it's not a very grateful work uh, and it's it's not acknowledged in society so when you when people ask you what do you do and you say well i'm i'm at home you know sometimes it's sneered upon the fortunate thing in our age now is there are ways that you could spend an hour or two hours a day when you have downtime and work from home, do certain things. And that's what the next section talks about, uh, not, in, not in great detail, but it talks about um, mothers who are resourceful. And it gi gives all these scriptures in Proverbs, uh, uh, who finds a virtuous woman uh, for her worth is, is far above rubies and then it talks about making merchandise, you know, uh, clothing, designing clothing, uh, making good food, um, investing wisely. And then it talks about direct sales and babysitting. Uh, there are things that, that you can do 
and there's a lot more with uh, a lot of different products that you can sell and and uh, there's online options and all sorts of stuff so there are ways of actually making money uh, whilst at home but i do think that uh, i i believe that that this is something that needs to be decided by the husband and the wife together i think that uh, unity needs to be reached there i felt to be honest if two of us were working and we both got it at, at home at night tired and stressed out and now you've got the child looking for attention you've got homework you've you know then it's not good so i thought that it's my function to work and um, my wife had the responsibility of of creating a wonderful house and 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 making sure everything was in place um, it's sort of like a, a partnership where what she did there was uh, the support service that are really needed in many areas of our lives uh, we good, need good nutritional food uh, we need a, a a peaceful environment we need a clean environment uh, we need clothing ourselves uh, and ironing and all sorts of stuff and i know a lot of these things aren't a very um uh, glamorous things to do and i'm not saying all women should stay at home i'm not saying that uh, all women should do it that way but i'm saying you need to reach some unity in there and you need to make a decision the last aspect uh, or the second last aspect we're going to discuss is the children and yes quite a, a you know interesting uh, section because uh, it says yeah the, the the father and the son in terms of God and Jesus, they are the same. They are in unity and we need to get unity with our children as far as finances is concerned. And uh, what it says here, it is it says communicate financial wisdom. Uh, if children know what they should do, uh, they should also know what they should do. If they, if they know what they should not do, sorry, they, they should also know what they should do. So it's easy for us a lot of times we say to children, don't do this, but we don't really tell them what to do. You know, don't do that, don't do that. Uh, to communicate with them and give them financial wisdom, that actually means that you are instructing them in what they are do, what they are to do. Uh, and yeah, uh, this scripture in, in 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, if somebody doesn't work, they mustn't eat. So the children, uh, it may be a bit harsh to say that to children, but uh, the point, the principle is that life does not play favorites and life is not easy and there's no shortcuts. And as you know, you can create a world for your children that you think is very beautiful and very pretty, but when they, when they leave the house, they're going to face the harsh realities of life. So... Um, I suggest that you train your children. Like I say, this is an area where we might have not done it always. We did it sometimes, but uh, I, I read John Maxwell's book once and he said that his father was his influence uh, uh, with his personal development journey because his father actually said to him, John, if you read this book, uh, you, you're going to get this amount of pocket money. So he had to read books for finances and that made him really loved books and he ended up actually uh, becoming a great uh, uh, minister uh, of faith and then also a, a great minister to business people with um, enjoying ministries and, and you know he's written uh, you know hundreds and hundreds of books and, and he's added such a positive contribution and it started with training when he was small and he always says that in his books that he, it started with training his father put him into a training system and trained him and we need to do that with finances uh, my um, uh, my sister-in-law is such a good example because she trained a daughter that she had to go work and she would save for stuff and then she would buy it. And now when, when I look at, um, at, at, at her daughter, she's so responsible in, every, in everything she does. She's a great example. And that is a great example for the kingdom because it's a testimony if our children act like that. But if we don't train our children, if we don't teach them the value of money if we don't teach them budgeting if we don't teach them all of these things uh, they will end up uh, disgracing 
the family and also disgracing God to a degree where, where, the, where the Lord's name can come into disrepute because you say, oh, that's a pastor's son. Or that. And I know it sometimes goes wrong. We can't always take responsibility for that, but at least we have to do what we are supposed to do in the household. So we need to train the child up, uh, chores, uh, saving, and then also the uh, you know, the responsibilities that they have to do, like brushing their teeth and keeping their room tidy and all of that, you know, it all adds up to a disciplined lifestyle. Uh, a lot of times in society, we want to throw a lot of money at things. We want to change things, but it's the small things that change the big things. In uh, New York years ago, it was the crime capital of the world. And um, uh, the mayor there, Liu Gigani, started a project uh, it was called uh, something like the broken window theory and what they did this they punished little crime and as they punish small crime like petty crime somebody urinating on the pavement somebody throwing a, a stone through a window it reduced crime in general because the tendency of crime reduced and it's the same with this when we train our children to be disciplined by brush, brushing the teeth or tidying their room, it will cause discipline in their homework and their homework discipline will cause discipline in their workplace. It will cause them to have a work ethic, to have a good character. So this is a foundation that we're laying, not just because we want to be funny and, and a lot of times we need to explain to them what they're doing. Uh, even having good manners these days, it's, it's, it's uh, sad to see that many of the children don't have manners anymore. And you might say, oh, what, what has manners got to do with finances in their lives? It's got a lot to do because uh, if you don't have good manners, uh, you might not be able to uh, function in your own business one day because people will not like you and, and you will be so abrasive in your personality that people will just not do business with you and you'll end up going bankrupt, blaming everybody. And then that can have a snowball effect of drugs and and, and uh, all sorts of things that you're taking to actually uh, numb the pain. So there's a, there's a great snowball effect. Our undisciplined life uh, causes a lot of knock-on problems. So uh, we must train the child and then train him to tithe, train him to sow into the Lord's word, uh, into the Lord's work. Um, and then to expect the blessing of God. Uh, my daughter once when she gave something she got blessed and she was so excited about this she just wanted to give all the time because she saw yeah the lord is blessing her now uh, tra tra train them to take responsibility uh, and uh, as they have personal needs you know ha help them to project a budget so and then an another thing that i thought were was very cute yeah is allow them to make mistakes sometimes don't hover them to a point where you're making a perfect world for them no allow them to sometimes make those little mistakes because you know what we learn from mistakes i'll never forget uh, we we created a program for the children's church where children uh, were uh, doing a quiz uh, about uh, a bible story on the computer and the quiz allowed them to make mistakes and then it would just say to them, no, sorry, you're wrong, try again. But by making those mistakes, we found that afterwards the children were actually improving dramatically in their retention of the Bible story. So if somebody was sitting there and they were reading a story and they might do an activity like color, coloring in, only 30% of the class or 20% of the class would actually remember what was going on and would retain the information. But if the kids were making mistakes, if they were making mistakes on the computer and the system said, no, you're wrong, Abram wasn't doing that, no, you're wrong, that wasn't Isaac, then they would actually get very engaged because of the mistake and they would actually learn much more. And it's the same in life. If people make a mistake, uh, it, well, most people are supposed to learn from their mistakes. I suppose that is a foundation. Having that foundation where you say, you know what, I'm going to learn from my mistakes and, and uh, allow them to to learn from their mistakes as well. So we're getting to the end of the lecture and what does this mean, the future of the household? Uh, again, we're looking at, at 1 Timothy 5, 8, which says, if, if anyone does not provide for his own family, especially for those of, of, of his household, he has denied the faith and is worth, worse than an unbeliever. Um, we are talking here about our eternal assets and our temporary assets. And 
what we need to do is obviously build up the heavenly treasure. That is great to do. But we need to also uh, look at longevity in terms of our financial decisions. And then also uh, make sure your will is clear and, and you're leaving your assets in, in good hands. So we're also talking about when we're leaving this planet. So uh, we read that uh, to leave an inheritance for your children's children is, is godly. So we have to make some decisions as far as our finances is concerned here on earth. And we have to work with those decisions. But then also we need to think of the day that we have to go because we all have to lay down this body. If the Lord tarries and he doesn't come, we will all die. 10 out of 10 people die and we move on. We have to think of um, what happens when we go. What happens to the assets? What happens to the, to the money that the Lord has trusted us to steward or the assets that God has trusted us to steward? What's going to happen to that when you leave? The fact is that if you are irresponsible in, in, in under point number four, then everything that you've worked for, everything that you've accumulated by faith, by tithing, by giving, can be destroyed because of a lack of forward planning uh, in terms of a will, a trust, whatever way you, you think of it. You know how many children I've seen actually lose their their family houses because their parents didn't plan. So what happens? I mean, just this is a financial uh, thing that I want to just mention. So what happens? Your 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 mother might be uh, d uh, already passed, and then your father dies, and the house is left to you. But you married two three years ago, and you are uh, you know struggling financially, and but now you've inherited a house. But now the, the, the lawyer comes to you and says, look, there's no money in the will. Your dad had no policy, he had no finances coming into the will. So the, the will is bankrupt. So he says, you need to put in uh, 10,000 Rand or 15,000 Rand uh, in our money. And you might be watching from a different country, but 10 or 15,000 you need to put in to the will to, to, to keep it liquid so that, so that there's money for the lawyer's fees and there's money uh, for the courts and, and everybody that takes money. And that's not all. Then he also says, and now remember, you also need to pay the transfer fees of the property. And this is in South Africa. And I'm just painting a little scenario. So the property needs to be transferred into your name. This is the law. And you need to pay the transfer fees. Now, currently, um, you know, the average property uh, that could set you back 30, 40,000 Rand. You, you get the picture. Yeah, you, you've inherited a house of a million or whatever, but you have to put in 100K or, or, or 80K to actually uh, help the process along. And this process is going to take a few months. So you're not going to get your money back. You're not going to move into the house. You might, be, you might be getting some occupation rent from a tenant or something like that. But you're going to run into a serious cash flow problem. Why? Because your father and your mother did not plan. And they didn't anticipate what was going to happen. Nobody wants to think of their death. We don't want to hover on death. We don't want to be death angels. We believe that the Lord has blessed us with a long life. And, and he will continue to bless us with a long life. But we need to be proactive as far as that is concerned. And especially as Christians and, and fathers are in Christ we, uh, and mothers in Christ, we need to be uh, um, responsible. And we need to think, how is this going to affect my family? The same if, if, if a husband and a wife is married in community of property in South Africa and one of the two passes away, very few people realize that that property now needs to be re-registered. Uh, and that, and that your, your wife's just passed or your husband's just passed. You've got a funeral to pay. You might not have a policy for that funeral. And then all of a sudden you have to, um, you have to pay a lot of money uh, out to re-register the property. Bank accounts might be frozen until um, you know, certain things happen. Uh, the, also, again, the estate might be bankrupt because there's no money. There's no physical money for the lawyers and, and, uh, and the master to take their money. So there's a lot of problems. And the thing is, you need to look at this. So as we are managing our financial household, uh, we are doing also forward planning. 
Uh, we are training our children, yes. We, we have to train our children. We are looking at the role of the father, yes. We're looking at the role of the father. We're looking at the role of the mother, yes. We are looking at that, but we're also looking at the forward planning of our fin financial household. And that is what this lecture was about. All those aspects, all the parties involved need to glorify God, I believe, in what they are doing. So just ending off with... Uh, the outcome after completing this session you should be able to define and describe the roles and the responsibilities God has set for the household so now at this stage you need to be able to actually define that once you've read through the through the notes once you've completed your workbook or you've done your online assessment depending on if you're an LMS student or if you're a attending student or if you're a correspondent student you will have different assignments to do but you need to reach this outcome. Then also, uh, just looking at the at the course overview objectives, define the roles God has set. Stating the person involved, noting individual responsibility, and agreeing that cooperation is needed. That is uh, that makes a lot of sense. Describe responsibilities involved, showing the husband's responsibility for for budgeting and paying the bills. And the wife supporting him being a resourceful home manager with children in submission and helping and like i said the roles can sometimes change slightly there it's not always exactly the same so we can't stereotype it but uh, this is how it normally works put a strategy in place assigning roles avoiding abdication of responsibility so you don't want to abdicate and say oh i'm not taking my response no you want to step into that responsibility following God's principles, focusing on financial wisdom, and then plan for the future. Remember the need for saving, prepare a will, and providing for the end-of-life eventualities. So there are end-of-life eventualities, and we have to provide for that. As Christians, we need to be preemptive there. So we've gotten to the end of this lecture. I hope this has been informative and I hope that it's blessed you and I hope that you are going to sit with your wife and with your children now and work on your strategies and that this is not just going to be lip service but it's going to be life service and you are going to change uh, in every aspect to the glory of the Lord. I will see you in the next lecture, uh, lecture five, where we are going to be discussing financial traps. God bless you and I'll see you in the next lecture.